So if you could treat 95% of your common health problems within your cats, dogs, and pets quickly, little cost, safely, and effective, would you do it? So in today's Divine Soul Awakening, we are with the absolutely amazing Rita Mustafa. She is an RNCP. She's a teaching acupuncturist, an energy worker, founder of Oasis Health, and author. And she's going to be talking today about the top 10 effective, most effective um, homeopathic remedies for pets, including dogs and cats, that you can treat about 95% of the common most problems uh, that you're going to have. So welcome, Rita. Hello. Thanks for having me back. So glad to have you. You are always such a wealth of information and it's even better that you're my wife. So yeah. lucky <laughs> <me>. <laughs> welcome. Uh, welcome to Divine Soul Awakening. Hey, everybody. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Uh, so what are you going to talk to us about, Rita? So I'm going to share my top 10 remedies that, um, that I find um, I use most often with with pets and mainly cats and dogs, but you can use it basically on anything, a horse, livestock, reptiles, doesn't really matter, uh, big or small. So I'm, I'm going to share with you my top 10 that I use, um, that I've been using in the last 20 years of my practice. Um, but in general, there's there's so many more remedies out there. But yeah, I thought I'd just start with the top 10 and and go from there. Awesome. So, you know, I've been hearing a lot about homeopathic remedies and I know you've been using them and I've been using them and I've seen what's worked really well with a lot of the animals, but why is, um, why homeopathics? Like what's so great about homeopathics? Um, just like you said in the intro, it's, it's not only, it, it's inexpensive. Number one, um, it's easy enough to find. You can carry these things with you anywhere, whether in a purse, in your pocket, if you're traveling, you can put it in your luggage. Like they're just, it's, it's easy to use so much information on it. Like there's so many benefits to using it on top of it all. It's, um, it's considered energy medicine. So it um, again, it, it's not about, um, you know, the placebo effect or anything like that because our animals don't know what we're giving them or even if we are giving them anything. Right. So, um, so as humans, we can kind of, you know, critique it or, you know, criticize it but um you know when we use it with animals we or even babies like we we know it's doing something so energetically it's it's making changes within the body i know spirit has come through many times and they're saying this is the way to treat everything in the future because we are all energy and as we deal with energy you want to approach it with a homeopathic uh, energetic medicine and it's no longer but you can't really deal with these things with synthetic drugs anymore um, it's just this, our bodies, our genetic bodies, our molecular structures are changing as well. So moving it more into a homeopathic energy based medicine is, is the constant message that I'm hearing always like it's moving to natural, going back into the basics and really uh, looking at homeopathics as, as some sort of healing option. So this is really exciting. Um, can you, but you know, I know it's safe, but because it's energy and you're, be, and you're taking a dose. So it's a, how, do, how does it work then? How does this homeopathic work? What? So um, so homeopathics are prepared in a specific way. So what happens is it's uh, the homeopathics are either generally made from animal, um, mineral, or plant, right? So whatever substance they're, we're going to work with, so they would take that substance. So let's say it's a, a, a flower. So we're going to take that flour, they make a mother tincture, so they dilute it in uh, alcohol, they make a, um, a what they call a mother tincture, and then they dilute and succuss, so shake, um, you know, multiple times based on what what the dosage of the remedy is. So, so it's that, you know, by the time you get to an actual like remedy, something that you're giving somebody, there's no actual substance left to it. It's just the molecular structure has changed because it's consistently being diluted, succussed, diluted, succussed, right? So, so it's just this, it's almost like you're energizing the, the water and then this water gets sprayed onto these sugar pellets and then that becomes a homeopathic. And so even if something is made from animal or plant or like a mineral, like I'm going to be talking about arsenic today. So it doesn't mean, you know, that there's actual arsenic like 
that you're actually ingesting arsenic you're in, it's more the the molecular energetic structure of it that you would be ingesting mm -hmm. and i'll explain why you would want to do that um yeah as, yeah. as i go through them i, I gotta say I've, I've seen rita treat a lot of animals uh, either they've come to their house or she's worked with them remotely and just the testimonials that come in are are amazing and astounding that I, she just kind of gives whatever as she does her testing gives out these homeopathics and like we're talking to like sugar pellets they put it into their the, the water the dog dish and they just kind of drink it all day and the dogs that we watch that come in the house like they're just healed they come in with whatever issues by the time they leave and go back to their owners a lot of times like some some of the pets they don't want to go home because they've been healed it's like oh my god like i don't want to leave like this place is amazing like it's like a i've just healed my entire body and these animals are just miraculous changes with this energy-based medicine uh, amazing it's amazing yeah it's so, definitely something that i i wish everybody had as part of their protocols or, or not protocols like a um emergency kits you know that type of thing um there's a really cool kit that that i sell um comes in this little box here but i like it because it's oops it um can you see yep. so it's made by helios um we can get it in canada us it's uh, in the uk for sure uh, i'm sure there's other countries um and when you open it it's got these uh, 18 different remedies inside. And so this is such a convenient little kit that you can, honestly, if you're, you know, going on a trip, you just put in your luggage. If you're, you know, you put in your purse, you can have it just handy in the home. Uh, I wouldn't leave it in the car or anything like that because the heat and the heat is not good for it. But, um, I, I love that kit and I love it when, when pet owners have that kit because, you know, they'll call me, their dog is, you know, vomiting has diarrhea. They don't know why, you know, so it's like, I can, I can just say, okay, go to your kit. And then I'll, I would test on my end to see which one to give them. Um, and you know, it's just such a, it's just such a, um, important, I, I feel like an important remedy to have, to have these handy. So what kind of, what kind of things does that kit cover Rita, as far as like, you, you were talking about nausea, covers nausea, has like a, a range of things that... Yeah, so this, the, the, it has the eight, there's 18 names on the back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about 10 of them today, 10 of these. Okay. Um, and then my class on Saturday, the 22nd, I'm gonna talk about all 18 of them. Nice. And yeah, so it, it can cover, it's mainly acute. Like, I, I'm not gonna use this to treat like, uh, I don't know, like some chronic, ailment that they've had all their life or something right it's more right. definitely use it as an acute so uh, i mentioned nausea vomiting so that for sure there's at least two remedies that you can try for that um if they're uh that also is good for car sickness so that animals that get sick because they're in the car and whether it's their ear or whether they're nervous or whatever it may be you can again you can use a remedy you can use it for pain strains um, so many things. Mm. So I'll, I'll talk about all those today. And I, and there's um, a chart. Oh, good. So there's a chart on my website where I've got all 10 remedies I'm going to talk about today. And then just a, a quick, like, when, why to use it. So like Arnica, pain, uh, Hypericum, nerve pain, right? So it's just really quick, kind of, kind of a chart that you can quickly just kind of pick and choose. Um, if you're, you know, especially if it's something acute and you really want to just give them something. Um, and then if you know how to muscle test or use your pendulum, then you can, you can actually sit and, and mm -hmm. pick maybe something else if that particular one that you chose didn't work and, and things like that. So, okay. um, yeah, so the chart, um, I think the chart will be helpful like, as a starting point for anybody. And, and if, you know, you feel that those 10 remedies are something that you want to keep on hand, then they're honestly, they're about 10 bucks, 10 bucks a remedy. So it's not a big, a big expense if you're buying like one at a time type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. So um, I guess we should go through your list and start talking about it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So remember the remedies are made from animal, plant or mineral. 
So in this case, the first one I want to talk about is called Apis and Apis is the honeybee. And so, um, one of the, um, one of the principles of homeopathy is like cures like. So when we're looking for a remedy, we're actually trying to find a remedy that matches the symptoms. So I'm trying to find in this case, uh, a homeopathic remedy that matches a particular symptoms. So think of the bee. So let's say you get stung by a bee. What does that look like? You've got heat, you've got redness, maybe you've got pain, you've got that. So that kind of picture. So if you, your dog, a baby, anybody uh, gets stung by a bee and those are the symptoms presenting, then I would pick the apis homeopathic. Um, but it doesn't have to be just a bee sting. So anytime there's anything red, stinging, hot, painful, so it could be some other bug bite, it could be a rash of some kind, like maybe, I know when I go into the garden, um, some plant, like the zucchini plants, if the leaves touch my skin, I just kind of break out into a rash on my, on my arms. And this is one of the remedies that will help me sometimes. There's others that I'll talk about today that might also be helpful for that kind of thing. But so if you think of that principle, light cures light, think of, that's why I like, I wanted to show you the pictures. So if you can kind of get an idea of like, oh, apis is a bee. Okay, what, what does a bee sting look like? It looks red, it looks hot, it looks painful. So then that might be a, um, a way to help you remember um, when to pick and choose certain remedies. So that's the apis. And so again, when you're taking the homeopathic, you're, yes, the original remedy was made from uh, a, a bee, uh, the stinger, I believe. Um, but the end product that you're actually ingesting is just the energy of it. It's not the actual, any part of the bee that you're actually ingesting. Um, yeah, so that's Apis. Um, Next one, Arnica. So Arnica, another beautiful flower. Um, so this this one, I think most people may have heard of Arnica because Arnica is is the, the remedy that you would want to use anytime there's pain, trauma, shock, injury. So, so many uses for it, right? So uh, let's say um, your, your dog, I don't know, uh, dog or cat uh, hurt itself somehow, then we can go for Arnica. Maybe they got um, some kind of a trauma. So maybe they, you know, another dog tried to attack it as an example, and they're, and they're traumatized. Arnica. Um, let's say they've just had surgery and they're, they may be in pain. So the Arnica, so you can go to Arnica and Arnica comes in the pellets, um, like these little sugar pellets that I've been talking about, but it also comes in like creams and gels mm. and so um for 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 us we can definitely like apply to certain areas that have been injured so if you've got a bruise or you've fallen and um you have some sort of injury then you can apply it topically as well as take it internally um for your pets if they've got a lot of fur it's going to be kind of hard to do it topically unless they're you know, they're kind of shaved down or something. Um, plus then you run the risk of them licking it off. So um, anyways, uh, lots of uses for Arnica. And I, I think um, it, it's probably the most popular, but think of it for anything that has to do with injury, tra uh, trauma, shock. Um, let me see if I wrote anything else for that. Um, yeah, accident, surgeries, anytime you want to promote healing. Mm. I know we use uh, Arnica quite a bit. I'll actually, any pain or soreness that I have in my shoulders or in my arm, if I pulled something, I'll put it on before I go to bed at, at night. And by the morning, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I just feel like so good. The Arnica is, is like a, a miracle cream or a miracle homeopathic. Love it. Yeah, and a lot of athletes use it. So whether it's by itself, like an Arnica gel by itself or um, other homeopathic creams that contain Arnica within it, along with other homeopathics um and yeah it, it, it's amazing it seems a lot of the uh, athletes are definitely moving towards natural as well you're hearing like a lot of people moving towards natural remedies mm -hmm. now i think yeah. so like i mean you you see even athletes with like cupping marks on their backs now right so it's like so they're they're definitely getting more into the 
or being introduced the alternative or the alternative is being introduced to them. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Looking for less chemicals in the bodies, even for pets. You know, I think of the, I think of that with Tucker all the time. Mm -hmm. Is there something I can do first before I'm gonna fill him up with medications? Exactly. And not to say that you know we're talking about if something acute has happened. So let's say you know there's some emergency where you have to you know you're on the way to the vets. There's no reason why you can't be dosing the homeopathics on your way to the vets. So it's not like one or the other, right? It's not like Good. you yeah. you can't do homeopathics because I'm going to the vets and they're going to get something else. It's like you can do both. And that's another beauty of of using homeopathics that is it does it doesn't interfere with medications. So you can use it even if someone or your pet is on medications. If if there's a need for homeopathics, you can still um, you can still dose it. It's good to know. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Looks like we've got Doc uh, with the, with us now in the stream. Welcome, Doc. Uh, hi, Doc. <laughs> uh, let's uh, get on to our next our next um, product here. So, what do we got next? Our Cynicum album. So, remember, I said plant, mineral, or animal. So, this is one of our minerals. So our Cynicum album, which is basically arsenic. So again, you're not going to be ingesting arsenic. I'm not trying to poison anybody here. Um, but if we look at um, what happens if someone uh, was having arsenic poisoning, so they they might present with symptoms of like uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, just you know that feeling of unwell. So again. If in, if in homeopathy, we're looking at like cures like, if someone is having or your pet, you know, drank from a dirty pond or, you know, dirty pool of water, and now they're vomiting, they're having diarrhea, um, it, you know, those symptoms match this particular remedy. So then I would reach for arsenicum album um, and dose them pretty often <laughs> to, to help with that. And again, doesn't mean you're not going to go to the vet if you need to go to the vet, but doesn't mean you can't also dose them while you're on the way to the vets, right? So anytime there's that sort of, so think of this one for food poisoning, mm. people or pets, doesn't matter, right? So if you've got the symptoms that match, then you just dose the remedy. And with, with these remedies, within one or two doses, if nothing's happening, then you've, you've probably chosen the wrong remedy. So then you would just go back to that list and look for something else that's similar. So, um, yeah. So, so, you know, if you're don't do 10 doses and say, well, it didn't work. So after, like I said, two or three doses, if you're seeing no change in symptoms, then it, that's not the remedy. Go find a different remedy. So when you're talking about arsenic here, and I know it's, it's, it's been uh, pared down quite, a, quite a bit. So that's, it's really is, quite mild and ineffective uh, in terms of causing that are direct effects arsenic. Because arsenic is usually used as, um, so, someone got some background noise there. Um, arsenic is usually used as, um, as, um, as like heart thinner, I think as well. Like, isn't it like it's like, it's used as rat poison, but it's also used as like rat, uh, heart thinner. Like if, if you start taking a homeopath like this and, it, and because it is energy based medicine, can you start taking on the symptoms of what is trying to prevent yeah so that in homeopathy we call that uh proving so let's say you're taking a remedy that you don't need and you're doing it for an extended period of time then you can uh prove that remedy meaning like so let's say you don't need our Ar arsenicum album at all and you just start taking it over a period of time if you continue to take it then you'll probably end up getting nausea vomiting and diarrhea because okay. you're proving the remedy Right. Mm. But if you already have those symptoms, you're matching the remedies. Right? Okay. And yeah. so what, what do you mean by you're talking about, a, you said an extended period of time, what is defined typically in a, like an extended period of time? Um, I, I think it depends on the potency of the, of the remedy. So when you buy a remedy, um, in the stores, it's usually like a 30 C or a 200 C type remedy, which means it's pretty safe to do long term. But um, in the case of proving it, you it would probably take a long time. But 
homeopathics aren't meant to be taken like like a vitamin every day homeopathics are usually just to treat the symptom as the symptom improves you can decrease the the amount of uh, times you do it throughout the day and then once the symptoms are gone then you can stop the remedy okay so you're saying there's a little number on each homeopathic so uh, i think that's probably too small but uh 30c so you, this mm -hmm. is nuts vomica which i'll talk about and it says 30c um and they'll all come into 30c is most common 200c is the next most common that you'll see when you're in the stores um and like i said those are those are safe kind of remedies so let's say you've taken it two or three times and that's not the one it's not going to you're not going to prove that remedy because you've done it three times and it was the wrong one right so 30c 200c those are the safe ones here's the other one 200c um yeah, yeah. so 200c so we'll just have a name and then just a number beside it the higher the number the more energetic that substance is so um uh how do i want to say this so the lower the number the i guess the safer it is if you were trying to do something long term the higher the number the less you should need to use it that the, higher, the less because yeah. yeah the higher the number the more energetic it is the more the it's like a higher frequency so we don't always need a high high frequency to to deal with a symptom right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we're dealing with pain, we fell, we bruised ourselves, you know, we, a 30 C 200 C within a few days is enough to kind of take care of the symptoms. But if it were like you got into a car accident and you're traumatized and you're, you, you know, you're, a, it's a, more of an emotional thing where it's, that's a higher vibrational remedy that you would need because you're dealing more with a higher frequency of, of emotion. Does that make sense? Okay. As a, like, Oh, I just, you know, bruise my arm or something there's not really a traumatic experience attached to that most likely i see so let's say your your cat or dog was a, like bitten or attacked by another animal and there's a very traumatic experience that their tail is tucked they're frightened they're yeah. hiding in a mm -hmm. corner that would require a higher frequency now, yeah so yeah go with the two start with the 200 c in that case or you can go even higher but i'd recommend working with somebody if you're going to go past those two numbers um but yeah if you if you feel like there's there's and and that's uh, if that happens to the animal the owner should do the same thing the owner needs the same remedy because the the owner is probably more traumatized than the animal yeah right if something happens because yeah. we just replay it the animal is usually like afraid because something happened but the i i find the owner is even just as traumatized so the owner should actually be taking the remedy also <laughs> right that's a good point happens. yeah that's a good point especially with like a dog attack on an yeah. on your dog or in a situation like that that can trigger a lot of trauma for the owner yeah. so homeopathics it's it's not um animal specific it's it, it's really is so i'm i'm gonna buy the homeopathic i'm gonna give it to my animal i'm gonna take it myself i'm gonna give it to my kids that are traumatized the whole family is gonna start taking this homeopathic and it, it's safe for everybody safe for everybody very cool yeah we have a question in the comments that just popped up from carrie lynn she would like any suggestions to get a barking dog to stop barking he is only being protective of her mm. uh, to stop barking so uh yeah so i would look at a few things so it, is it if it's behavioral that's kind of harder to shift especially uh with just homeopathics if it's if it's behavior meaning like um it's just learned behavior like they're just they just do it all the time like they bark all the time you can probably try a bach like bach flower remedy that that's where i would go because you want to actually change their behavior um if it's if if it's barking because it's a it's fearful. So someone's coming towards you, your dog is barking at them, the dog is afraid for you or for them. Then if that's something that's common, then um, aconite, which I'll be talking about next, I believe, aconite might be a good remedy um, because that's more for fear. So if mm -hmm. they have fear of other people, um, I find this a lot in, um, because we do a lot of pet sitting, the last two or three years, we call them the, the COVID dogs, right? So people who got dogs during the time of COVID 
and they never really socialized properly. They, you know, they didn't really, they weren't really around other people. And so they're the ones I find that are coming that are just fearful of people, people, noises, like just situations in general. So they tend to be more, they tend to do well with aconite. So when they're here, I'll put a few pellets of aconite in their drinking water. And that just seems to like, just calm them, calm them down, not, not to be so, you know, so afraid of everything. Um, so you can try aconite or a Bach flower remedy. I just, um, I, I just love the pun there, bark flower remedy. Sorry, just. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Carolyn, we have a similar situation with our dogs that are barking, uh, depending on the stimulus. I think what we've found is we've tried to identify what the stimulus is, um, you know, and it, it might be they're having a, a discussion with one another or they've seen a squirrel out the back. Yeah. or they want to eat another dog you know it just depends what happening mm -hmm. what's happening around them and i think observational um your observations are very powerful way of giving you clues to what's going on um but uh, but that's just our experience anyway yeah okay. over to uh, you rita i'll add this that rita has a, a free class on saturday at 11. You can register on our site. You'll see this homeopathic remedies for beginners. So these homeopathics, she's going to go through all 18 instead of just the 10 of them. And you can ask your questions in more detail uh, at that class. So go check out oasishealth.ca slash classes, and you'll see the homeopathic remedies for beginners to register. It's a, it's a free registration to see that she has. So I'll just put that out there as, as well. And Carrie Lynn was saying that she's not sure why she barks except to alert me and... If she's not home, she doesn't bark at all. Yeah, we, we found that um, if the dogs were barking at something in particular, we would take them to that particular thing and then reassure them, and then they say, yeah, it's okay, and then they go back in. Um, the only exception to the rule is the postman, but that's another story. He just has to learn to run very fast. That's all. <laughs> Poor postman. <laughs> okay, yeah, so Aconite we got next year. Yeah, so aconite. So it uh, goes by many different names, monkshood, wolfsbane. Um, uh, it has a history of being used as a poison uh, at the end of an arrow. So mm -hmm. again, if we, if we can kind of think of um, if, if, okay, so remember, remember like cures like. So if someone, I don't know, drank this or ate this, and they would give certain type of symptoms. Um, and so for this one, we use it uh, for like fear, shock and trauma. So very similar to Arnica. Arnica was more for pain, shock, trauma. Um, but this one includes the fear. So fear, shock and trauma. So let's say something happened again. Uh, your dog got attacked by another dog you're trying the arnica and it's not quite doing it you can do uh, arnica and the aconite together or or you know stop the arnica and try aconite um so you can you can mix and match some of the remedies if if you find they're not really if one by itself is not really doing it try it with another and then and then see see if that works any better but yeah so aconite is more for fear so if, so um so it, it almost be like if if i drank poison by mistake and then my stomach is getting really sick things are nodding up i start going what did i just do and you start it's that panic and yeah it's and that panic so up. yeah so they would use this as a poison on the end of the arrows right so so that's probably whoever got hit with the arrow they'd probably ex eventually end up experiencing these symptoms hmm. uh, like fear shock like just <laughs> unwell right so exactly so if if experiencing any of those symptoms then this might be the remedy that would help but definitely think fear like fear is sort of like the one thing that kind of stands out for this one along with the other stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense yeah. aconite so these the amount that you're getting in one of these remedies is so minute that it's not actually going to cause poisoning like they did on the arrow that's um, my mind is trying to compute yeah so uh, so again when they're making the remedy they're they're um they're taking the original substance and they're creating a tincture and they're using one drop of that tincture and putting it into 
uh, like usually uh, it's either in the, the C, like in the 30 C's or 200 C's or putting it into a, a solution of 100. So one drop into a solution of 100 drops, right? And then they're taking that, they're succussing it, they're dilute, and then they're going to dilute it again. And so you're, you're talking about one drop that's being diluted either 30 to 200 times. So there's no actual substance left at that point yeah it's, it's yeah. just energetic information that's being passed down every time they dilute and succuss dilute and succuss and they're doing it over and over okay. so there's no substance left yeah yeah because my brain all automatically computes when i see that word poison arrow i'm like well why why am i going to take something that yeah. that they use to kill people with but that's why i just wanted to ask that question again yeah and and that's why i i I kind of wanted to show the picture or give a little bit of description because then that helps you think if like cures like, if that, if, if mm -hmm. someone who's poisoned acts a certain way, then I know the remedy yep. that would help them. Yep. Right. I like that. So next we have Cantharis. Cantharis. So this is um, from prepared from the Spanish fly or a green or a green beetle. It kind of just depends on who's making it. Should we practice and guess what what uh, what this would treat? I'm oh thinking, yeah. Sure. Any anyone want to take any guesses on here? Because I'm thinking poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac, some anything with blisters, right? Yeah. A burn. Yep. Yeah. So if you get bit by a Spanish fly or a beetle, you might experience some of the symptoms Jenny just mentioned. So like blistering again maybe there might be heat there might be um uh pain uh stinging there might be irritation of the skin so anything that matches those symptoms so you don't have to have been bitten by this particular mm -hmm. fly to take this remedy but this is really good for any type of generally speaking it's like skin so like again if i'm in the garden and the certain leaves touch my skin i'll get this like rash um like a contact dermatitis type thing and it gets really itchy and doesn't even get red, but it gets super itchy. And so Cantharis uh, sometimes helps to kind of just take take all of that away for me. So this um, is where we might see the dog will actually go nosing into the bushes somewhere and just be like, I don't know, go, go into like some sort of like, I don't know, it, it poison could be ivy or something. I don't know like, what, what would it be. Anything that makes them itchy. So it could actually be, yeah, something from outside. It could be... Um, Maybe, maybe, you know, there's, a, they have a sensitivity to a certain food and they're constantly itchy. So we've had dogs here that are just constantly scratching themselves and it's, mm -hmm. it's annoying <laughs> because when you're trying to sleep and all the dog is doing is scratching all night long, it's, it's, you know, it's annoying for them, I'm sure. So, yeah. um, you know, so I usually will prepare, prepare uh, a number of different remedies. So we talked about um, Apis earlier. So the B, right? So if it's, mm. if, if they're scratching and they're scratching and their skin is getting like red and hot, mm. then I might do Cantharis and Apis together. May, if it's just like itching, like, um, like nothing raised or nothing red per se, but, but they're just sort of itching, maybe the Cantharis is better. This one's also really good on vacation. Remember, um, um, so, so think of getting sunburned. What does that feel like? It's stinging, it's burning, mm -hmm. but there's not really a rash or anything, but it's just a stinging, burning pain. So but you do want to rub it. Yeah, you want to, you, you still want it. And then it's painful when you scratch it. So that's not good either. So we've used it. I mean, it's been a long time since we've been on holidays, but we actually used it um, before we would go out into the sun. So we would actually take a few pellets mm -hmm. before going out into the sun so that if for some reason we, you know, spent too much time in the sun that, you know, our skin would turn red, but we wouldn't have any of the like sunburn type symptoms. And we went on holidays with a, with a couple and they, you know, we, we were doing this and I don't know if we shared it or they didn't care for it or whatever the reason was, but we were totally fine. And yeah. So uh, Tucker's, yeah. oh. Sorry, Tucker's yeah. prone to allergies, seasonal allergies. Um, and we just started with the grasses are starting to get green, the trees are budding out, and Tucker is starting to do more itching. 
if I had been giving giving him Benadryl, which is is working, but again, do I want to continue to give him Benadryl? This sounds like something that could help him with his seasonal itching. Yeah, so I'm going to show you this one. So this is um, actually there's another one also, but this one is more if it had if he also had like runny eyes, runny nose. Yeah. Um, you could use this one. And this is a combination of remedies. Let me see if I can. Um, none yeah. of the ones I'm talking about today, but anyway, so, mm -hmm. so there are combinations that you can get. There's one specific for hay fever. Do I have that one? Like there's, this one is available um, in the UK. Helios is from the UK. Um, a little bit harder to get in Canada and US, but still available. Um, uh, and this one has uh, three remedies in it and really good for seasonal allergies. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, so you can look, look at your uh, health food store or, or wherever you get your homeopathics and you can find combination remedies for specific conditions. So if seasonal allergies is, is the thing, then yeah, look for something that, that's specific for allergies. Great. If we go back to Cantharis for a second. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the skin. So any kind of itching, itching skin. We, I talked about sunburns. So if you get sunburned, um, or even if your dog's nose gets sunburned, you know, sometimes dogs nose, mm -hmm. the, their nose gets sunburned and they're, you know, it, it, it's very sensitive. Then you can try the cantharis. This is also really good for UTIs. So burning, stinging pain. Mm. It doesn't have to be skin. So if, the, if, if your dog has a UTI or you have a UTI, and you have burning, stinging pain while you urinate, then this could be a remedy that that might be uh, helpful. I think recently we were talking about kidney stones. One of our mm. one of our friends had kidney stones. Would that be something good for it? Or I don't know. If it, I don't know. I've never had kidney yeah. stones, but kidney stones. Um, I I'd almost do arnica for sure because there's going to be lots of pain and trauma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wherever the stone is 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 trapping or is being trapped or um is, is lodged um i mean you could they could try it i it's hard yeah. to say i don't know if cantharis would be the re the specific remedy there is probably a more specific remedy for for uh, kidney stones now what what would you you i would assume that you would typically do your pendulum testing yeah, I, I actually would use a another line, which is like a, a plex remedy specific for, for urinary tract system, which helps break down the stones and but it's more complicated. It, it's, it's not really something that I can cover in, in, in today. But yes, there are homeopathics out there that would definitely help someone who has yeah. active kidney stone pain going on. Well, we also had you were on last uh, last season where we did a whole pendulum series and uh, there's a number of charts that is in that show that we did the pendulum. There's the chart that you supplied on how to do the whole mm -hmm. testing. Do we, does anyone know what episode that was? Do we have that I, handy? Yep. I have it handy. Hang on one second. So that in that in, one, I was, oh, cool. yeah, it was in the second season and it was the episode 15 dowsing with a pendulum. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, I think we did it. We, we may have done two of them, um, and but they're both really good. And we really went through, Rita created this big chart to go through that we do a bunch of testing. So that was season two, episode 15, and uh, the Timidism Dowsing. So that would be a really good one to narrow down on some homeopathics to figure out for yourself. I put that link in our messenger, Con. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I'll post it up shortly. Okay. Okay, hypericum. So this is St. John's word. Um, so um, hypericum, so the, the one line you want to remember about hypericum is it has to, it, it helps with nerve pain. So let's say you're cutting your dog's nails, you've cut it too short, right? It starts bleeding, you can give them hypericum. Um, and then you can give yourself arnica for cutting their nail too short because you're probably traumatized by it. I know I have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's so traumatic to see them start bleeding and yelping and whatever. So yes, yeah, so you can give your, your pet hypericum. You can take some arnica. Uh, <laughs> all will be good. 
Um, but any type of nerve pain. So let's say maybe your pet has a pinched nerve. Maybe they were running and they did a funny twist or something. And now they're, you know, having a hard time walking, uh, or they're just, you know, acting stiff. You can try Hypericum if you feel that it's, it's a nerve related thing. Uh, for a person, I would say, um, anything like maybe you cut yourself, um, you can use it for, uh, like nerve pain. Like let's say you're having dental pain and it's mm -hmm. like your nerve is irritated. You can try Hypericum, uh, shingles. If you have shingles, you can try Hypericum. So anything to do with nerve, this is the remedy that you want to use Hypericum. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Leadum, yeah. So Leadum, um, wild rosemary. So this one you would use um, for any type of like puncture wound. So this could be uh, a tick bite. This could be um, uh, like an injection site. So let's say your you, your pet has had some sort of injection and they're in, uh, they're in pain or the area is red. Uh, you can do Leadum, uh, a porcupine quill, anything that's sort of punctured. Mm -hmm. Hmm. punctured the skin right so um mo this is a very common remedy in the alternative world for any for tick bites so if you find a tick on your pet um sometimes there's symptoms sometimes there's not you can still take the tick out get it tested if you want um and still give your dog at least one dose of lead them if there's active symptoms like the um you, you feel like they've been infected then you know work with your practitioners or vet or whatever, but it doesn't mean you still can't give them lead them. You, you probably can actually give them lead them for, for, um, for a few days until the symptoms get better while you're doing other things. Um, yeah. So anything to do with like puncture. Now you said this was wild rosemary. Mm -hmm. Is there any scent or flavor that comes off these things? Are you going to be putting this on your, on your steaks and whatnot? <laughs> No, I'm guessing not. <laughs> Blank faces. <laughs> We're just diluting it. There's nothing. All, There's nothing. all you're going to taste is sugar because these are all just sugar pellets oh, that have been coupled oh. with the remedy. So Jeez. you're just going to be eating sugar, which is why it's so easy to give to pets and animals mm -hmm. and um, kids. Adults. I like the fact you can put it in the water too. Yes. Yeah. So if it's, um, if it's something that with cats it's a little bit harder i find because they're not big drinkers mm. so I find sometimes with cats you either have to like put in a syringe and get it into them or if you can just shove it into their their jowls with dogs too same thing you can just shove it into their jowls and it takes them a little bit to try and get that pellet out and then by that time the remedy's already been absorbed so you yeah. know so that that's the easiest way to get it into pets either shove it into their jowl uh, or add it to the water. It just depends on how cute, how acute the situation is, right? So if they've, if they've just twisted their knee or something and they're in a lot of pain, then just start putting them in the in the jowl and then also add it to the water. So where Callie and Tucker use the same water dish, then I would want to dose Tucker in the jowl, then to put it in the dish and have the cat be getting it too, exactly. if she doesn't need it. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so if you've got more than one pet sharing the water bowls, then you probably don't want to you don't want to do it that way. You probably want to separate it out. Yeah. yeah. But if it's joint trauma, then it's okay. Yeah. 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 If it's the same symptoms that they're experiencing, then they're they're both gonna benefit. Awesome. We um we use um a grated mozzarella cheese. You can scrunch it up into little balls. And after a few test runs, and they'll both jump and chew yeah. the cheese, you oh. can then take the tablet, put it inside the mozzarella ball, and chuck it, and the little fellow yeah. doesn't know what's in there. He just swallows it. So it's a, it's a simple way, but it gets it down there, and you don't have to inhale. Just, yeah. just yeah. blow it into their mouths, you know, sort of thing. You use raspberries for Tucker. Put it inside oh. the raspberry. Right. Right. raspberries. Now, you guys both bring up a good point that – you know, there's the difference between ingesting it and having it go through your di digestive system compared to having it in your mouth and going, being absorbed into your, mm -hmm. through your saliva, through your, into your blood. So is, is there a difference, a benefit or one better than the other? 
Um, generally speaking, if you can if you can dissolve it through the mucous membranes of the of the mouth, usually they say under the tongue, but with an animal, you're not going to get it under their tongue. So that's why I say the jowl. Um, if it if if it doesn't dissolve in the mouth for them, then it, I find it still works but maybe it takes longer or maybe you have to do it longer. So I find if you can just put it in their water or just shove it in their jowl, it's just, I, th I feel it works faster, better, as opposed to giving it with food. Good, that's a good point. Yeah. So I, w I wonder, is there any destructive properties as it goes through the acid in the stomach and it needs to go through mm -hmm. the intestines to get broken down before it's actually absorbed into the body? Um, um, I feel like because it's energetic, I don't, I don't think that like, it's not a digestive issue. I think it's just an, mm. like getting it into your system. Okay. So, right? so regardless, it's great if you can get in their water that they can go through, they can lick it in mucous membranes, get in their jowl. Great. Cause it's, I guess it, it's a faster transport because it's going it's through. Faster transport. Yeah. Cause I've seen, I've seen some people will put, put it in like, um, like an apple, if they're doing like a horse, as an example, they might put it in like a piece of apple and give the horse the apple with a with a remedy in it. Right. So it, it it must still work. But personally, I would still just put it in the jowl because they'll they'll figure out like how to get it out. But by the time they figure out how to get it out of their jowl, it's already either dissolved or yeah. or absorbed, right? Well, Rachel, as a horse owner, would you are you feeling pretty comfortable to stick your fingers in in the jowl of the horse's mouth? Yeah, I have to do it all the time. Um, <laughs> they have like um, the way their mouths are. They have like a, a set of front teeth right in the front, bottom teeth right here. There's a huge gap in their gum line and they have their back molars. So you just stick your finger right here in the, uh, where the teeth end <laughs> and then they open their mouth. I have to give her like um, worm wormers, deworming uh stuff that i have to get mm -hmm. it right in there and like pump it in real quick and <laughs> swallow it so yeah that's okay I could, do, I could definitely do that good to know but yeah that's fun good stuff <laughs> <laughs> so we got next vomica next next vomica this is this is another really handy one to have um so this is uh i could the is it the poison nut, I think they call it? Um, anyway, so you can imagine just by the name, if, I'm sure if you eat this nut, you probably have symptoms of vomiting. And so partly in the name, it helps you kind of think of like vomica, vomiting. So mm -hmm. kind of to remember, but yeah, so Nux vomica we would use for vomiting, nausea, vomiting. Um, arsenic album was the other one if it's nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. So if, if the arsenicum isn't working, you can always try Nux if you, if, because the symptoms are sort of similar. Um, what else can we use it for? Nausea, vomiting, travel sickness, which we talked about with arsenicum, um, uh, bloating. So maybe more for, for humans, but um, yeah. So it, just to keep it simple, Nux vomica, think vomiting or nausea. Mm -hmm. So my kids, are always getting like stomach aches and you know they will sometimes throw up but um not always but sometimes it's usually couples with diarrhea as well it, it's just a common thing in our house anymore with three young children <laughs> yeah. so um yeah either so one keep, of those would work yeah so if you keep arsenicum and, and nux vomica handy you can either just give them both at the same time and see what happens if it you know, corrects it after one or two doses, then you're done. Or you can try them separately, like try our symptom first, because maybe it matches more diarrhea and nausea. But af if after two or three times, it's not really helping, then add in the nuts. Okay, great. Thanks. In, the, in Southeast Asia, Rachel, we use a lot of um, white mm. rice, boiled rice. Mm, yeah. That usually gums things up in the, yeah. <laughs> in the, the other end. And uh, fennel, yeah. fennel water again, it used to be found in, um, what was that thing we used to give babies for their gripe, gripe water? They used to have fennel in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, boiling fennel in water and diluting it's very good as well. Yeah. Great. My, my, uh, my favorite also is uh, activated charcoal. 
screen that was another one. So earlier you were talking about give a dose and then give a couple of doses after how much time are you waiting between doses? Depends on how acute the situation is. So if it's like shock trauma, you can do it every 15 minutes if you need to. Uh, or if you, you know, you broke something and you're on your way to the hospital or something and you just, you're in a lot of pain and you do it frequently, like every 15, 30 minutes type thing. If it's like, um, like the skin rash I was talking about when I go to the garden, I find two, three times a day. So maybe, I don't know, four or five hours apart. Okay. Cause these pellets so it really take just like, depends on like how a... serious. Right. That's what? Well, well, you froze up there. You're frozen. Yeah, there you go. I think you're better now. Question. Uh, it, I think typically when we take a pellet, okay, it I takes about a minute. When you have a pellet, it usually takes about a minute to dissolve. Yes. It really doesn't take that long, like 30 seconds Would type you of say thing. That's long? I think that's I think that's even too long because it's like it's not even the, the whole sugar pellet that needs to be dissolved. It's just the outside of the pellet. So just by licking it and licking the outside of the pellet, that that's the remedy. The the sugar pellet is just the carrier. It's just something that holds the remedy, right? So so that's why it's like if you can just get it in the mouth and and kind of just you know keep it in there for a good ten seconds or so, um, that that's really enough time. The rest of it is just a sugar pellet. So now now when we're talking about administering it. I mean, typically, if you're going to be putting it into your dog or cat's jowl or, or your kid, um, you're going to be you might be pinching onto the pellet, and wouldn't like your the, the oil on the hands have some interference with this as well? Is there a proper way of administering these things? Yeah, I'm. I mean, ideally, like you know, your hands are clean and and all of that because you because you're going to be touching it. If you were an adult, you would just you know, or a kid, you would just put the remedy in the in the cap of the thing and just kind of pop it in your mouth, right, without even having to touch it. Um, but uh, again, if it's an acute situation, and you're in the middle of a park or something, and you have the remedy, and you need to give it just give it whether your hands are clean or not, or, or whatever it may be, you just do it. Um, and yeah, so ideally, you know, clean hands is ideal, don't touch it is ideal, but that doesn't always happen. So awesome. Got it. Got it. Okay. I think we're on our, maybe our, our ninth or well, last. Yeah. There's a few, yeah. So this is, there's actually 11 remedies in this today, but I put Ruta and rust talks together because usually speaking, I, um, I give these together. Um, so rust talks is poison Ivy. Pretty simple. What does poison Ivy look like if you've, gotten into it, you probably have red, itchy, raised, stinging, pain. So any kind of symptoms that would match um, that is what you would do rust tox for. So you can use this for uh, poison ivy or poison oak. You can use this for chicken pox as an example. If you have kids with chicken pox and they're scratching and um, you know the raised, uh, the raised blisters and stuff. Um, but this has two kind of um, uses. So skin stuff, the itchy skin stuff, but this is also really good for um, sprains and strains. So this is good for any kind of injury. So, as, um, and that's why I put these two together because I'm going to use uh, rust talks for some sort of sprain, sprain, sprain or strain or injury. Um, and Ruta also does sort of the same. So good for sprains, strains, ligament pain, ligament stretches, ligament injuries. And so normally if uh, with pets, you know, there's a lot of like torn ACLs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you can put Ruta, Rustox and Arnica together, um, like dissolve it together, all three remedies, and you can dose okay. them with that. If you feel like it's some sort of like a sprain or a strain or again, ligament type injury. Um, but Again, you can use the, the rust tox by itself if it's skin related. So we've talked about at least three that we can use for skin, right? Mm -hmm. We've talked about mm -hmm. um, the cantharis, the apis, and now the rust tox. So there's three skin ones there that you can you can use. So you could have like just like a, a small bowl of water, put a bunch of the mixture of different pellets in there and swirl it around a little bit and just have like some sort of syringe that you just draw a few drops in there, 
every once in a while just squirt in their mouth. Like it's, it's, it's not like, yeah. You have to... Yeah. So there's, uh, yeah. So you can do it that way. Generally speaking, if you speak to a, you know, a classical homeopath is just one remedy. You just do one remedy at a time. Um, there's lots of plex remedies like that, you know, like the one I showed you where it's like a combination of remedies in one. Um, so sometimes, yeah, mixing the remedies, uh, is helpful. So like I said, Arnica, Ruta, Rustox, that's like a classic animal kind of remedy that those are the three that I'd like to have my clients have, because if, when there is an injury, you just start, you just start it and then whatever, go get your x-rays, go get your vet check, whatever. But in the meantime, you're helping them with the pain and any kind of uh, injury or whatever. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then so, there should be one more. Silica. Silica, Silicia. So some, it, I don't know if it's country dependent or company dependent. So sometimes it'll say silica on the, on the package and sometimes it'll say Silicia, but it's made from the mineral silica. Um, and we use this to help push things out. So foreign objects out. So think splinters, foxtails, like anything that might have gotten into the skin that you can't get out um, easily. The silica, you can, this one you would have to, you know, repeat pretty uh, often uh, to, to help push the pellet or the splinter out of the body. Um, but this is also good for, um, uh, abscesses, so it helps to open and or drain uh, any abscesses. So most likely you won't really have to deal with that problem, hopefully, but at least um, if, if nothing else, think of it as helping to push out things. So so like mm -hmm. a, or a fox, fox tails are the worst because if they get in like an ear or something, you can't get really get in there or if they're in between like a pad or something. It's hard to get to, so you, you can help um, help the body expel it by taking the Cilicia. Would that be the same thing for like splinters as well? Yeah, for humans, you mean? Like, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can take it multiple times and it'll help push the splinter more to the surface and then you can pull it out. How would you administer this? Uh, uh, like how often or like? How, how, in what form? How would you give it to the dog, to the animal? Oh, uh, Again, just a single remedy. You would get it as a single remedy. Right. Yep. Okay. So, just, yep. so our, our dog, one of our dogs has an irritable, sorry, um, an irritable ear. Um, we've had it examined numerous times. There's nothing in there. No seeds, no debris, no infection, no nothing. He just yeah. is uh, extremely, he gets periodically uh, very agitated when he tries to scratch it and mm. um, invariably ends up hurting himself. So we have to put um, uh, sort of like a protective cone on him to stop him from doing it. Um, is there anything you might um, consider or suggest for that? Because it's there's no obvious cause. It no. doesn't look like it's stress-related. It's just um, every once in a while he scratches his ear, it probably causes more trauma and he wants to scratch mm -hmm. it again. And does it look red or anything? Like No, no. There no. have been times in the past when it's looked clap, you know, typically yeah. inflamed and infected, but um, honestly, nothing for the last year or so. And he just um, just has a really good go at it and then ends up in distress because in of distress, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so my first thought, it's not a remedy I talked about today, but uh, the remedy is Belladonna. So okay. Belladonna is like, uh, like yeah. A going like, yeah, re uh, symptoms that kind of go up. So I would try uh, Belladonna. Um, if, if it seemed like he was just scratching at it because it was like itchy, then you could try one of the, like the Cantharis or Rust Talks. Like you could try something like that. Okay. Yeah. You just have, okay. you have to play with it. So do a few, you know, if, it, if this sure. is chronic and then try like a few doses, if nothing is really changing, then go to the next one. Like, the okay. Next one. He also does periodically lick his skin, you know, lick his fore um, uh, arm. Yeah. Um, sometimes, uh, to the point of redness. Um, yeah. uh, again, um, there's no obvious infection and, and could be possibly psychological, the vet said, but does, is there an association between the two, the ear and the, the licking? Yeah, so it's probably, yeah, some sort of sensitivity. So actually try, um, yeah, try the Cantharis or the even the Rustox or the Apis, okay. mind you, and like 
maybe uh, like rotate through those and see if that uh, if any one of those in particular makes a difference or you can muscle mm -hmm. pendulum test or muscle test whatever sure. but those thank are the you. three that come to mind for that yeah thank you mm -hmm. Well, I just want to remind everybody that uh, Rita has her free event on Saturday that you can register at oasishealth.ca slash classes. And that's for her homeopathic remedies for beginners. Um, and you can probably ask a lot of these questions. She went through about 10 of them today, but she's going to go through all 18 of her kit there. Um, yeah. Was there anything you want to talk about that, Rita? This is the kit that I'll, I'll go through, and there's 18 remedies in here. Um, and I'll talk about each one sort of like I, what I did today, uh, but not, not specific to just animals, to just everybody. Because as we said, it's really good for anybody. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Dog, animal, child, pet. It's, it's all good. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. So much good information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's awesome. So... Thank you so much for joining us today, Rita. How exciting. Um, yeah, definitely check out her class on Saturday if you guys are interested in learning more. And then our next episode of Divine Soul Awakening will be going live again in a couple of weeks on Wednesday, May 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard or Eastern Time. And that show, I will be bringing on one of my coaching clients. I'm an intuitive coach and spiritual medium, and I work with clients and um, on a, a more regular basis. And this is one of my clients that I've been working with for over a year now. And he's been going down the path of accelerated ascension with some pretty amazing and wild stories and personal experiences, working with multiple, multiple dimensions and um, different activations and healing that took place on his journey. So he'll be coming on to share more about that on that show. So definitely tune in with us again on May 3rd. And yeah, we'll leave links to everybody's YouTube channels below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And that's it for now. I guess we'll see you all in two weeks. Beautiful. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.